Well, good morning and welcome to Bowtie Life, where we talk mostly about life in the garden. And today we are going to be talking about preserving some of our harvest. And uh, these Roma tomatoes, I've just harvested these a couple days ago. It is December 30th, 2023. And uh, we are going to hopefully make up uh, five quarts of uh, pasta sauce. And I don't have a from scratch recipe. I'm using Mrs. Wage's uh, spice packets. And we that's kind of where we're at right now. We're not uh, quite at the point where we can do all the stuff from scratch. But uh, I think it's important to document what we're doing even at this stage because I know a lot of people out there are at the beginning stages and, and may need some warm up. Uh, so anyway, we'll be talking about this thing here. And uh, anyway, yeah, so let's, uh, let's get right into it. Hi, I'm Bowtie Dave. So future editing, much wiser Bowtie David here. Uh, before we get any farther into this video, I started the whole process of water bath canning quart jars in this, the Presto Precise Digital Pressure Canner, in this video, and you're going to see me go that direction. Don't worry, we corrected that. Anyone who has used this device knows that you can't boil a water can or, or uh, water bath can, both the same thing. Uh, you cannot do the quart jars in the Presto Precise Digital Pressure Canner. Everything's the same, all the steps are the same. We're gonna end up in the traditional water bath canner that you get from your hardware store or somewhere else. Uh, and uh, we will get to that point and explain the shift and everything that happened. Not very proud of this moment. Uh, it happens, failures happen. Sometimes we just forget what we're doing. And I was all excited about doing quartz because that's what Mrs. Bowtie wanted and the quartz didn't happen. So anyway, back to the video. So here on uh, our little property, we live in uh, Destin, Florida. It's the panhandle of Florida. And uh, we have just been upgraded from zone 8A to zone 9A. And I'm sorry, 9B uh, at our location. And uh, we have a very nice climate for growing. We do get um, frost most years. Uh, last year, we did have a very hard freeze. Uh, this year, it's December 30th, and we haven't gotten below 39 degrees yet here in uh, Destin, Florida, uh, which is uh, not real cold, I know. For us, it's a little chilly, but uh, the weather has been great. I've got a lot of tomatoes still growing. In fact, uh, we've harvested so many Everglades tomatoes. I've told... Uh, one of our neighbors, the kids love cherry tomatoes, and uh, I told them, send them over to pick as much as they want, and I know they're gonna they're gonna enjoy that. But uh, anyway, because they've they've already had some of them. But uh, yeah, so we are um, getting ready to do some canning. Uh, we are going to make Mrs. Wages pasta sauce. Now, last year we did this in pint jars, and Mrs. Bowtie said she really would like to have them in quart jars this year. So we're gonna do quart jars and uh, see how that goes. <laughs> so uh, these Roma tomatoes, in fact, the ones on this plate, I, I normally stick them in the freezer. Um, at this point, they're getting a little bit soft. They've, been, they've ripened up some more. They look beautiful. Um, but uh, there's a few little um, uh, just split skin areas, nothing insect damage because these have been in organza bags for uh, a month or two. So they've been protected for the most part. Very rarely does, uh, do, do I get damage inside one of the organza bags, which is very nice. Uh, some, it's a good option to look at if you're getting uh, bird or insect damage right near harvest for your tomatoes or other fruit. Uh, I use them for melons. I use them for uh, cucumbers if I need to. Uh, I've used them for a number of things out there. But um, anyway, so uh, I've been harvesting all summer and through the fall and now into the winter and uh, we had eight gallon size bags full of tomatoes now they're roma tomatoes there's uh, 
Super Sweet 100s, there's um, Nebraska Wedding, uh, and Everglades Tomatoes. So there's a lot of tomatoes out there uh, in the freezer. And uh, I used um, almost two and a half bags, I think, to get, yeah, two and a half bags to get 13 pounds of mostly Roma tomatoes. I did have to supplement to get the even 13 something pounds uh, with a lot of super, large Super Sweet 100s. And oh no, those aren't Super Sweet 100s. Those are Principe Borghese. That's what they are. I knew that was wrong. I just figured it out. Uh, and also the Nebraska Wedding. Now the Nebraska Wedding is kind of like the Roma. It doesn't have a lot of juice in it. It's more meaty, uh, great flavor, and uh, Hopefully it'll just add a, add a nice uh, twist to the pasta sauce. So anyway, um, we have jars in the uh, dishwasher sanitizing. I've got the dishwasher set to hot, 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 the hottest it'll wash. And it's just sitting there, just the jars, no soap, no nothing, just the jars. And it is running and will be running for another couple of hours where hopefully we'll be getting to the cans long before that cycle runs out. But if we don't, uh, it's okay. We just restart the cycle and just pull them out when we need them. Uh, we want the jars warm. Uh, we're actually going to use the tomato processor and uh, we've been using this thing two seasons now and it's been working great. Uh, it, the uh, recommendation for this tomato uh, processor that we're gonna be using here came from Living Traditions Homestead. Uh, they said they buy one and they go through one of these about uh, every couple few years and they just buy another. It's just a real cheap thing. Now I did see uh, on More Than Farmers, uh, and I'm gonna mention them again here in a minute, uh, More Than Farmers, they actually uh, use the old fashioned spinny thing. And uh, I think I'm, after this thing is gone, in fact, I might go ahead and order it. Uh, go ahead and order one of those uh, metal spinny things for it that's a, that will process tomatoes as well and uh, either have that as a backup or keep this as a backup. I don't know. We'll have to see. Um, anyway, so we will be processing the tomatoes first and then um, and that, that removes the skins, the core, um, a lot of the things you don't want. Some of this, a lot of the seeds get, get filtered out. Uh, so kind of gets it ready with a nice mush to go into the pot where we cook it for a while and then fill the jars and start this thing up. And we'll record the whole process and get the whole thing in here today. It is currently uh, 9.41 a.m. And uh, we'll have to see how long this takes to do a double batch. We're doing a double batch of, these, of this pasta sauce. Uh, and... Yeah, so uh, if you have not subscribed yet, please do so. Um, yeah, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet because you, you miss, miss out on things like that. Uh, if you've already subscribed, I want to thank you so much. You're my heroes. You have helped to grow the channel to what it is today. And uh, also be sure uh, if you find this at all informational, educational, inspirational, or just entertaining to see me fumbling around the kitchen because, yeah, I do. I fumble a lot. Uh, Click the thumbs up on this video and share it on your social media. All the things I've just mentioned, subscribing, uh, thumbs up, uh, sharing on social media, commenting, all these things are free things that you can do to help grow our channel. Every, all these things actually help gain exposure to the videos uh, and, and uh, help other people to see them. And so uh, we're looking for your help. Uh, I, can do, I can only do so much and a lot of it's up to you as the viewer to uh, help out if you think it's worthwhile. So anyway, um, I think that's about the summary of everything that's going to happen in this video. Uh, we'll use some um, time-lapse uh, sections with music, with a little tinkly music and uh, kind of get through this as quick as possible. It does take a while to do this. Uh, and so I'm not expecting, uh, 10 minute miracles, we are preserving uh, the year's harvest of, well, in this case, tomatoes. Uh, and uh, I may even go record uh, me um, picking, oh, we got ginger out there to pick. 
uh, to pull harvest. We got a big harvest of ginger out there. Oh my goodness. Uh, you'll have to see that in another video, which is why you want to be sure you're subscribed so you can see those videos. Uh, so yeah, um, I'm going to change positions here and we are going to start uh, with processing tomatoes. Um, yeah. So let's go into the kitchen for just a minute because there's something going on in there. So yes, I know, I said into the kitchen. This is the kitchen for the sake of the video. Our kitchen is kind of a galley kitchen, and so I find that I can get uh, better coverage. I, we have a row of tables here on the outside of the kitchen. Uh, we're actually in the living room. Um, we are, have plans here, actually. We're gonna be putting in cabinets and a countertop on this side eventually. But uh, anyway, so what we have here, I actually pulled all the tomatoes out of the freezer and they've been thawing overnight. In fact, you'll notice a lot of these skins are just coming off the tomatoes very easily uh, as they thaw. And uh, then one thing that the um, uh, Michelle over at More Than Farmers, I learned from her and I think Stivers did it also, but when you let this stuff thaw overnight, there's a lot of water in there and the water is settling out. Now, the reason why this is important for pasta sauce you're gonna take it over to the stove and you're gonna boil out a lot of water. Well, if you can actually pull out a lot of water like this, then um, you don't have to boil out as much. It doesn't have to boil as long and, and, and steam away as much of that water because we just got rid of it naturally here. I thought this was genius. And so I wanted to try it this year. Um, but basically I'm gonna pour it into this little uh, pitcher and see if I can do it without making too much of a mess. Now the reason I'm not just pouring this into the sink is because we want to keep this water. Ooh, this is hard. We want to keep this water because if we need to add any more back in, we'll have water to add back in and thin it back out because I have a feeling if we dump off too much, uh, the tomato sauce will get too thick and we don't want that to happen. So I've gotten, ooh, not even about half of the water out. Let's try that again. I know I should probably be doing this with a strainer. Okay, that didn't turn out too terribly bad. Uh, looking down. Oh, yeah, there we go. Now there's still a lot of ice in here, but I think all the tomatoes have thawed uh, I'm feeling around in here. I don't feel any tomatoes that won't make it through the food process the tomato processor right here Whoops, I'm dripping everywhere I'm gonna Grab a towel real quick uh, Oh, Paper towel There we go So we got, I don't know, it's like a little over half a gallon of uh, just tomato juice, tomato water. Uh, so we'll be able to add that back in as we go and uh, to, to thin out the, 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 the pasta sauce if we need to. So the next thing we're gonna need to do here is we're gonna need to run it through the food processor. And I've shown this before, You've, you can see this in other videos. This is just something we got off Amazon let me pull you in a little bit closer here. So looking down here, almost from straight up, you can see that there's a handle here. And as the handle turns, this little spindle turns. Ooh, what is that? Piece of something there. Oh, it's just a piece of leaf. It's dry though. It's static to the thing. Okay, there we go. Now this all disassembles. It's actually really easy to clean. But as it goes through, it, uh, it, you can see there's a screen underneath there. It filters out the, the mush the good stuff on in this bowl, and then there's another chute on the backside that'll filter out in the skins and stuff on the backside over there. So there is a suction cup here that works for a while. It's not a great suction cup, but you can see it holds it in place while we use the processor. And we're gonna be pouring our tomatoes in the top here, and you'll see, be able to see that the stuff come out both the sides here. So here you can see me uh, processing through 
these tomatoes, sticking them in the top and out the this shoot pointing toward the camera. That's the mush that's going to be the pasta sauce. Out the side here, of course, is the uh, skins and the parts that we don't want. However, I will run those through a second time and we'll have even more out of that. Not a lot more, but I hate wasting uh, anything we can get. And so I will run all that through a second time and make sure that we get as much of the good stuff as we can out of this batch of tomatoes. Now the instructions on the package, Mrs. Wages package actually says to uh, boil these and peel the tomatoes. That is another way to do it. This is just as valid. When we freeze them, it separates the skins and we run it through this uh, processor and it does the exact same thing. Uh, I think it's easier and just a lot quicker. So, and I don't burn my fingers in the process. That's the thing I really don't like about stick blanching the uh, tomatoes for a few minutes and then putting them in ice water and then peeling the skins. They come off pretty good but in the end you have to core them. Uh, this does it all in one step, which I'm very happy with. One final thing to address here is the uh, use of which tomatoes. I forgot to cover, yes, Roma tomatoes and the Nebraska wedding are great for making sauce. The Princip Borghese have a bit much water, which is why we separated as much water as we could. You can make sauce out of cherry tomatoes. And this is something I learned from Living Traditions. They made a whole bunch of sauce from a ton of leftover cherry tomatoes. So uh, you just have to let some more of the water come off. As we started in the beginning there, pouring off the excess water. So from running those remnants a second time through the system, you can see I got about another, I don't know, is that a cup of uh, mush that I got out of those tomatoes? I'm not gonna run it through a third time. That was, I'm, I'm very satisfied with that. So we're going to be doubling this pasta sauce recipe. I've, I've doubled the tomatoes. So we got two package uh, of the Mrs. Wages pasta sauce mix. And these instructions are on the back, I know. Uh, but I'll be honest, I'm one of those people, I need to see it happen once. And that's one of the reasons why I like to go to YouTube so much, to see it happen, see how it goes. Uh, it also calls for, and the re little recipe right here, calls for a quarter cup of sugar. And um, so doubling, doubling it, we have a half a cup here. Two quarters equals a half. And then the two pouches of the pasta sauce spice mix. We're going to put them all in this pot. We combine them in here and we're going to bring this to a boil. Now we do have a couple of backup jars of tomato paste and we will be using those if we need to thicken up this uh, recipe at all at the end. Uh, that is the concern. We did get rid of a lot of water. Uh, I don't think we're going to be putting any more of that water that we saved back in. Uh, because Mrs. Bowtie inspected the mix, or this, the sauce here, the, the, the processed tomatoes, and she says that these, this might be too thin, whoa, might be too thin. So we may end up having to thicken it up just a touch. Um, Mrs. Bowtie says she doesn't think it's gonna need but one of those cans of uh, pasta sauce, but we'll have to see what happens here. We'll get all this combined in, turn on the heat. It says to bring it to a boil and then simmer it for 25 minutes. Now, remember we were talking about uh, simmering this and simmering off some of the liquid. Well, that's what that's doing. It's gonna simmer off some of the liquid and uh, we're gonna thicken it up as we go here. Now, we'll just have to see. Uh, Mrs. Bowtie will come in and inspect and see how it looks when we're done at 25 minutes and determine then if we need to add either water or uh, the organic tomato, uh, the, the tomato paste, sorry. We use a lot of organic products. Uh, that's up to you and your desires. I do recommend organic, but anyway, so yeah, this is going to take a while to heat up. Actually, that really thickened it up quite a bit, didn't it? Uh, Ooh, that looks really nice. So we'll just see how this uh, 
stirs in and go from there. One thing I did want to mention uh, while this is coming to a boil, uh, you'll notice we are using a stainless steel pot here. Uh, the instructions are very specific. You do not use an aluminum, an aluminum pot here. That is a bad thing. Uh, you, it is a reactive element and you end up with, I don't know, aluminum oxide in your food or something. I don't know what it is. The, the acid in the tomatoes reacts with the aluminum and it reacts to it. So I think it actually makes a little bit of flavor go into it. So you wanna be sure to use only stainless steel type stuff as you're doing this. So we have a real nice little simmer going on in the sauce here. We have about, we're about halfway through the uh, simmer process here. Uh, you can see here, I got a pot of water getting ready to boil and a teapot here ready to boil. Uh, I'll cool that off a little bit because it's gonna finish a lot sooner than we're gonna need it. But uh, everything is kind of coming together here. Okay, folks, that is 25 minutes. And I've been stirring this occasionally and Mrs. Bowtie. Now, folks, I am not the cook. I, I don't do well cooking. I can cook a few things. Anybody can do the canning, though. And that's kind of why I'm doing a lot of this because I really want to encourage people to take part in this. But Mrs. Bowtie is here. Go ahead and take a look at that and tell us what you think we need for that. Okay, so you see it's a little thin here. We're going to add a can of organic uh, tomato paste. So, because when you use it, it's not going to set up, especially in lasagna. It's, it's too runny. So let's try and give it a little bit of thickness. Okay, so I have one of these cans of tomato paste here that uh, we're just going to add to it. We do use organic stuff when we can. It's not a requirement, but we do recommend it. All right, we'll stir that and see if we need a second one. Okay. We don't want it too thick, but we don't want it runny either. Yeah. I know every time we do this, I never think the little amount of tomato paste we add is going to make that much difference, but it always seems to. I'm trying to break up all the little hunks of it. It's things like this, though, that I am, that I do this when Mrs. Bowtie is around. I do need a little supervision sometimes. <laughs> I think I have broken it up. Oh, oh there's a big old hunk right there somewhere. How long does it take this stuff to break up? Um, it's just going to take a few minutes. Let me see. Yeah, let's do the other one and then let it simmer for a little longer. Yeah. Okay. Let's do there the second one. There you have it, folks. Let's do the second one. Yeah, see. Oh, there's still chunks in there. Ah, it's not the right. I think came right out of the can opener. Probably why you're supposed to put it on a countertop or something, right? Fortunately, this stuff is not very liquid. I'll do a little better breaking it up this way. How's that? Oh, yeah, I see, felt here. Stir and feel the tension. Oh yeah, definitely. Okay. I'm gonna stir this. This will simmer a little bit longer. How much longer do you think? It's about five minutes. Five Let's minutes. See what happens. Okay. I will stir this in for about five minutes, and it'll be thicker. Okay, so it's been another five minutes, and Mrs. Bowtie has given her final approval on the pasta sauce. It does look. She says it looks beautiful. So I thought she said I look beautiful, but she corrected me. Okay, so uh, the sauce is ready. We have a few supplies here. We've got our canning rings over here. We've got uh, the lids. Now, another way to sanitize, and I actually did it with this, is to uh, put the lids, which are the little round things that are hot because they're in hot water, and you pour 
uh, boiling water over them. That's another way to sanitize things. It's boil, boil, boiling water. You can sanitize your jars that way if you want. We did run these through the dishwasher. I just wanted to show you another way to do that. I normally do this with the lids anyway, just, uh, I don't know, just because I do. So when you're lifting the lid, of course, always lift it away from you because there's a little bit of steam in there. A few supplies you're going to need here, of course. You need a jar lifter because those jars are hot. It actually says right there, fill jars. It went through its process of warming the jars and it beeped twice and then it says fill jars. So we're getting ready to fill jars. Uh, a couple other things I have already. I did these while we were simmering the sauce. Uh, we have a canning funnel and I have a bowl here with a little bit of distilled white vinegar that we're gonna wipe the rims of the jars. And if you've watched any of my videos, you know that's the part right there that I keep missing. And I just remember the last thing I need. is something to remove the bubbles with. Someone commented on that on another video. I'm gonna do it this time, I promise. Uh, so here we go. So these jars, remember we have water in them so they didn't float. So I have a pot over here, that's what this pot is for. So as I pull the hot jars out, we're going to empty them into this. If you're next to the sink, you can empty them into the sink, of course, but uh, we do not have that kind of space, unfortunately. So. When we're filling these jars, we need to leave one inch of head space, which means we're gonna fill up to right about here on these jars, right about the curb. Uh, you do need to leave plenty of head space on these. Uh, I have been uh, guilty of not leaving the proper amount of head space, which can mess things up. This canning funnel makes it real easy to keep the top of that jar clean. You can see it just funnel, it just, it's big enough for the ladle, but it keeps everything well within the confines of the jar. So there we go. I have filled that jar to within an inch of its life. No, 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 we have not. I have filled that jar with at least an, woo, ow, <laughs> with at least an inch of headspace. There's probably a, just a tad more. This is just vinegar, folks. This is only uh, distilled white vinegar. Uh, I, some people say use water, and that's fine. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, Stivers Home says said uh, they use vinegar, so I do what they say just because I respect what they're teaching. So, you know, I mention a lot of other channels a lot, and that's because I believe very strongly in... Oh, okay, see there? I almost didn't do it. Remove any air bubbles. Uh, you run your a knife or a chopstick. We actually have chopsticks that we do this with too. Down here to make sure all the bubbles are removed. And I'll leave this right in my way so I remember to do it. Okay, see now I need to rewipe the lid, rim. Just in case I got something on there. We're going to try to get four or five good jars of sealed pasta sauce. Okay, tightening the lids. Tighten it under its own. One eighth of a turn. That's all you need. This ring just holds this lid in place. That's all you need to do. And I'm going to use the jar lifter to put that back in there. And we'll go with the next jar. Empty it out. Between the hot spaghetti sauce and the hot jars, it is hot on the fingers and I'm normally not one to complain about my fingers getting hot. I can handle some pretty high temps, but that was hot. Okay, about the same height again. Now sometimes I feel like this part here is just a formality, making sure the bubbles are out. I can see bubbles coming to the top here. But I want to do it right. Wiping it off. 
There have been times someone caught me once. I forgot to wipe off the lids. But it worked okay for some reason. I don't know how, but it did. And this is just a little magnet that I'm using to uh, pick up these lids out of the hot water. There's a little stick you can get. I know, I gotta get one. I gotta get the little tools. Well, it's about this point in the video that I realized you can't water bath can in the Presto Precise digital pressure canner. You can't That's... water bath quartz. What did I say? You just can't water bath can. That's not right. Yeah, you can't water bath can quartz. <sighs> this is very hard on my ADD. So we have shifted quickly into the old water bath canner that we bought at Ace Hardware. And uh, some of you may be familiar with this. Uh, you can see inside here, we are hot and we are coming to a boil. The water is about one inch over the four jars that we got of spaghetti, of pasta sauce. And we're shifting to the old fashioned water bath canning. Uh, the big thing, you it's the same process. It's just that you have to do it manually now. Uh, you warm your jars in there just like we did before, except you'd have to do it, you know, turn on yourself and, and water bath can. Uh, you'll notice there is a cage in here that's holding the jars off the bottom of the uh, water bath canner. If your jars just sit on the bottom of the canner, you will burn the contents of your jar or, or break them. Uh, you don't want that to happen, obviously. So, uh, in a matter of moments, we shifted. Uh, I realized we had a lot of water in that liner in the Presto Precise digital pressure canner, and we used that in here instead, and we shifted the contents over to this water bath canner now with warm water. Did I miss anything, Mrs. Bowtie? Well, yes, we had the warm water, but we also had other stuff boiling for the lid, so we just yes. combined all the water. Yes, remember the extra pots that you saw uh, with boiling water, here's the reason to use it. We just, we just uh, proved why to, why to have extra water boiling when you're canning, <laughs> that's all. Uh, there are uh, six jars in here. Uh, remember, I, I don't know if I told you, I pulled out seven jars just in case. Well, this is the just in case. So we're gonna wait for this to start boiling. Once it starts boiling, we start the timer. Now, on the back of the Mrs. Wages package, which I don't see anywhere right now, uh, it says to uh, do that for 40 minutes, to let it boil for 40 minutes. That's the processing time. And so we'll let this thing boil for 40 minutes, and we'll come back. So as you can no doubt hear, it's at a roaring boil. It's been at a roaring boil for 40 minutes. And that's the processing time indicated on the back of the package here. We're just reading the directions. And so the next thing to do is to turn off the heat and you have to let those stand in there and kind of cool down. Uh, the, the, the instructions say for um, five minutes. I think that's probably for a pint. I'm going to go with a quart for 10 minutes. So we're gonna let this thing cool for them and be right back. So it's been 10 minutes and it has cooled for a little while, and you can see it's still got plenty of steam coming off of there. Open it away from me. So when you're removing your cans, your jars from here, always remember, do not tilt your jars. Uh, when you tilt your jars, you run the risk of the contents coming in contact with the seal that's right in the top of this jar, and that is not a good thing because, in fact, you can see it's kind of boiling up a little bit. It's still boiling. You want to listen for the pops of those lids, the clink. That's going to be the magic thing. But if the fluid, the liquid inside comes in contact with that seal, it could mess up the seal and mess up the viability of that jar. I just heard a pop from in there. I think this one just popped. Oof. 
can't get to that one because this is why I don't like canning over here because the microwave is like close to the stove. The stove is kind of a low power stove. It does okay, but not great. I much prefer using the Presto Precise digital pressure canner. And I have to turn this pot even more. Yes, those handles are hot. So I think all the lids have set. Yeah, they have. So we'll just have to see what we get when we finish with this. These do need to sit for between 12 and 24 hours. So sometime tomorrow afternoon, I will be recording the end of this episode. So there we go. Few lessons learned in this video. <laughs> uh, it is the next day, uh, December 31st, uh, New Year's Eve. I have labeled my jars. Always label your jars. Just do it. I'm sorry. Always label your jars. Um, we used our pasta sauce mix from Mrs. Wages. Now, now, and I know some of y'all might cringe about this. We do want to make our own spice packets. We're just not there yet. We are still learning. And so um, one thing at a time for my ADD brain and and uh, we'll get it figured out. But uh, I, 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 I'm glad we have these for a start. We may use them again in the future, uh, even after we can do our own spice packets. I don't know. Uh, we'll just have to see. Anyway, um, so yeah, we ended up with four quarts. Uh, the moment of truth is upon us. And the test is to take off the ring and try to lift this by the lid. Now, we don't want... Uh, if you saw one of my recent videos where I had my first failures, um, we don't want that. You should be able to lift by that metal lid. And these are quart jars, and I can lift these things by the metal lid, the, this thing here. Now, here in Florida, we store our jars without the rings on them. It is humid here. Humidity gets inside here. It'll rust the lid. It'll create um, oxidation and it will make a seal fail over time. So we always take our rings off. Um, I've just been told that's the way to do it. So uh, I, 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 I follow that. I, I have seen them rust. I'm looking at my jars right now and I can see there's some jars over there with the rings on them. I don't know why, but that's do as I say, not as I do kind of thing. Anyway, so yeah, a few lessons learned. Um, first off, of course, uh, I did record a lot more to this video uh, because I was trying to use the Presto Precise pressure canner. And I remembered last year we did pint jars and Mrs. Bowtie didn't like the pint jars because she would end up using two pints for a lasagna. Uh, and so she wanted to go with full quarts. And so I thought, oh, okay, we'll just throw the quarts in the Presto Precise Digital Pressure Canner, and you cannot water bath can in, you cannot water bath, I see, I almost did it again. You cannot water bath can quart jars in the Presto Precise Digital Pressure Canner. Look at the book, it tells you that. Uh, the reason is because it's not deep enough. Uh, these things need to sit inside the canner with at least an inch of water above them, and there just isn't room in that canner for that much water which is the point at which I realized I had made a very large mistake. So, <laughs> oh my goodness, that was, I, that really threw me off yesterday and I remembered now and, and I do remember we talked about it. We actually talked about doing quartz in this. Uh, we did get this from Ace Hardware, as I already mentioned. You can get these anywhere. There's a little book that comes in and shows you how, tells you how to do it. Um, I will try to do a video on this uh, next time we do something out of court jars. Uh, yeah, that was <sighs> lesson learned. Uh, what was the other big lesson learned? Um, there was something else that I was going to mention here, 
that uh, we went through. Oh yeah, of course, using stainless steel pots. I, I knew that, I always use stainless steel pots when you're dealing with acidic uh, foods like tomatoes. Uh, yeah, it reacts with it. It puts a kind of a weird taste into the food that you just don't want. Um, I don't believe I mentioned in this one is the jar lifter that I used. You don't want to be reaching in that hot water and lifting those jars out. That water's hot. Use a jar lifter. Don't touch it. Don't burn yourself, please. Uh, yeah, anyway, so that boils down to it. Um, kind of a rough overview. I, I hope you got some details out of it. I know I said during the video that uh, I, I really like to do these videos, uh, more instructional videos, hopefully to inspire someone. I am not a chef. I am not a pro. I'm not a master gardener. I'm a handyman. Uh, and I, uh, if I can do this, believe me, you can do this. One of my specialties is ramen noodles, okay? I'm not much of a chef or a cook or anything, so when it comes to the kitchen. But uh, I, I really think we should um, take a proactive uh, stance on uh, creating our own food and knowing where our food comes from and, and, and eating healthy. Uh, I, I had a transformation in my life about four years ago that that um, really changed my health and I'm hoping for the, for the way better. Uh, I really strongly feel that it's for the way better. So anyway, uh, I've mentioned before, uh, if, if you have subscribed to this channel, you are my heroes. You have grown this channel to what it is now and I so appreciate every one of you. Uh, if you have not yet subscribed, please do. Uh, we cover all kinds of things from the garden, uh, planting, growing, harvesting, flipping beds, to preserving, to occasional cooking and creating some food with our, with our garden produce. So, uh, and then saving seeds. We got some, uh, I know we got some bean seeds we're going to be saving here pretty soon. And uh, I think we're going to be harvesting ginger next. I got a lot of, if you've seen our garden tours, go back and look at the December raised bed garden tours, part three of the monthly garden tours. Um, we've got a lot of ginger out there and I think I'm about to go harvest that, uh, process it, and processing is gonna include slicing it on a mandolin and dehydrating it for like 24 hours. And then we're gonna vacuum seal it. So got a new little toy <laughs> from a friend uh, I'm very excited about to do the vacuum sealing in jars. So anyway, um, yeah, don't miss a thing. We got lots of stuff coming out. Uh, a lot of this is my own log of the things that are happening in the garden and in preserving and so forth. Uh, I go back and look through these and I, uh, I, I get reminded of things. Sometimes I go back and look at last year's video to see what, when did I do this? When did I do that? And what happened at this point? So these are really personal logs of things that I'm doing as well. So kind of documenting what's going on here. We're not creating content. We're, we're not creating something new. We're, we're just documenting what's going on here. Um, if you thought this was at all interesting, entertaining, uh, inspirational, or just uh, educational, in educational, informational, inspirational or entertaining, I get it out in one way or another. Uh, that's my ADD brain. Click the thumbs up, please. It helps the videos. Share it on your social media. If you have questions or comments, tell us what you're doing. Uh, please put in the comments below. All these are things that you can do for free that actually have a big impact on the growth of the channel. And I appreciate those that subscribe and I appreciate the likes and the, and the shares. I really enjoy uh, seeing the comments and the questions and, and uh, occasionally I've, I've learned stuff from those comments. I, I have, and uh, it's great when I can learn stuff. Uh, yeah, I'm sure someone would have commented about, you can't do quartz in a Presto Precise Digital Pressure Canada. That was the big thing. Uh, <laughs> reason why I did pints last year was because you can't do quartz, and I had forgotten that. So. Anyway, it's a beautiful day, and I need to wrap this up so I can get some ginger harvested. Uh, look for that video to come out 
three days after this one, I'm hoping. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll take you all the way through ginger from harvest to storage. And uh, there we go. So hope your garden is growing well. I know it's the end of December, the last day of 2023. And some of you are under snow. Uh, look into doing some cold frames. I'm eventually going to be looking into that myself. But there's so much you can still do. Uh, I, I, I really admire the, uh, the channel More Than Farmers. I've mentioned them a few times in this channel, in this uh, video. Uh, they're in Ohio. They've got cold frames along the side of their house where they grow lettuce and, and greens all winter long. And I just think that is so cool. Uh, but uh, th there's so much we can do and uh, measures we can take. So anyway, hope you have a blessed day. Mm -hmm.